Yeah, so I heard that song, that Senorita song for the first time. I like. I think it's been out since June. It's been out for a very long time. Yeah. I, I listen to the radio every day, mind you. So I, yeah, no, I um, I heard it just the once, and that was on the car ride. And then the second time, it's like it's a catchy song because I've heard it like five times since. Yeah, you don't think I noticed about it? Hmm. Does Sean Mendez also want us to call him Senorita? Probably because he says it along with uh, Camila. Yeah, Camila Cabello. Yeah. And so he's singing it too. So I'm like, wait a minute. I don't. I, I get that she wants to be called Senorita. Yeah. Does Sean Mendes also want to be called Senorita? Maybe. episode mm-hmm. but we did come up with a tagline or i came up with a tagline and that's yeah. been approved by y'all okay and the tagline is so the title is the f word podcast no it's the f word the best podcast you'll never hear mm-hmm. that's our tagline so welcome to the f word the best podcast you'll never hear part of the saskatchewan podcast network which is sponsored by Conexus. Hit that hashtag money talk, y'all, to talk about money. Your money. Baby, I got your money. Don't you worry. Uh, it is just me and Vass because uh, Anthony has a job. Mm. And for some reason, they don't like to tell him when he actually works. That's always great. My guess is that this might be an ongoing thing. Like, so Nick's Nick hasn't been able to come because he has two kids. And that means he's tired all the time. And then now Anthony has a night job that changes. Can't say exactly what it is. And then you and I are the ones with our day jobs. Yeah. And so we might end up being just like the duo. Sometimes. Yeah. Cap and Chunky Thor, as you put it. Yeah. Yeah. That worked out. That was good. That was a good response. I actually sent that whole thing to people. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, that was really funny. And yeah. I was like, I know. It was perfect. <laughs> and to put it in context for anybody listening, it's uh, so Anthony texts us in our group chat, the, the podcast group chat. And he's like, hey, guys, sorry, got to work. I won't be able to make it or whatever. So then I say Vandoros super loud because that's our last name. Mm-hmm. G and Vas Vandoros. And I say Vandoros. And then I put the gif of Cap saying assemble yeah and it's cap saying assemble and then right next to him is thor and yeah. then you're just like oh that works perfectly yeah. there's cap and i could be chunky thor yeah <laughs> pretty much <laughs> so that's good i like that i like that a lot um are you feeling better from monday is that last monday already dude it was this past monday yeah yeah i guess this past monday because we came back from our trip on sunday oh yeah why just because you were in a terrible mood oh it was just one of those days I had one of those today. Yeah. I had one of those today to the point where, like, my supervisor, mm-hmm. who I'm always on good terms with, yeah. plus the other two people that I work with, I don't know. There was an exchange that went down, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure I'm 95% wrong in this, Possibly. but I delivered it in, like, a, a good way. Like, I realized I was wrong in what I was saying, yeah. but her reaction back was super hardcore, like, almost like there was either pent up stuff she's wanted to tell me or something else was going on. Yeah. Anyway, she reacted to me in a way that I was just like, well, damn, like, Mm -hmm. all right, this is new. Like, tell me how you really feel. Yeah. And then, so I just recused myself from our little group, Mm -hmm. which is like our coffee group. Yeah. Yeah. Like coffee and smokes and stuff on our breaks. Cause there's only four of us, maybe a fifth every once in a while. Yeah. And I just like, I was like, all right, this is the type of day it was going to be because I wasn't having it today. I wasn't Sometimes you have those anything. days where you just don't, I don't know, you're just not there. Well, And, and it's like you feel irritated by almost anything. I was, but, and I, I thought I was fine until that happened and it really bothered me. And so now what I've been doing when things really like actually bother me, not like when I'm like annoyed or peeved yeah, and yeah, by yeah. annoyed, I mean like by something innocuous, mm-hmm. right? If it's something where I'm just like, just having to really think about it, 
I will go away. Like I let mm-hmm. them go for their smokes. I didn't even join them. I had, I didn't even say two words after I did my work. And then that was it. Went home, called it a day. Yeah. She never said anything more to me. I never said anything more to her. She's super busy. And yeah. I get that she's super busy. And I know we're at a weird time, like, cause our work is very weird mm-hmm. where it's super, it's busy now for everybody because it's the last bit before everything kind of shuts down for the winter. Yeah. So there's this mad push to get all these random things yeah. done, but it's not consistent. Yeah. And it falls on her. So I totally get it. So instead of being around that, and me putting myself and ruining their their coffee, yeah. Then I'm just gonna like mm-hmm. whatever. Soph said it's because I don't wake up early enough, That's and that, possibly it. So this is how my day goes: I wake up. Mm-hmm. We have to be out the door by seven twenty-five. Okay. I get out of bed at seven ten. Yeah, it's not good. I go like, and I've got all my clothes ready in mm-hmm. our little laundry room that's by the door. Yeah, I go over, put on all my stuff, and then we're out the door. Yeah, and then I'm right into the car. We're driving, going through traffic or whatever. Mm-hmm. So whatever happens, I still haven't. It's one could say up. that I haven't woken up, but I haven't figured out what my day is going to be like mm-hmm. until I get to work. And sometimes it's not that busy so i have yeah. like five ten minutes i'm usually there about 10 minutes early and i have another 10 minutes past eight o'clock to kind yeah. of whatever you know mm-hmm. like we're trying to f- see what what's going on but i walk in things are happening so i just started 10 minutes early whatever did my thing yeah and i think i hadn't been able to realize that i was not in a good mood today hmm. and then so so like well maybe you need to wake up a half hour early i'm like yeah but i'm really tired all the time i'm like I don't think I want to. I think I just like I'll I'll be the hermit at work for a day. It was yeah. Friday, so who cares? Yeah. Anyway. I used to be like that, just get out of bed and go. Like I'd be up, get dressed and be out the door and not care about anything else. But I didn't have I'm a morning person anyway, so I didn't have a problem adjusting. You are a freakish morning <laughs> person. Let's let's yeah. put some context. You're the guy that will party until four AM. And still be up on the bright 6 a.m. to go to work. Yeah. And not even phased. I gotten a little bit bad with that. Lately? I'm losing it. Yeah, a little bit. But not because of partying, just like staying up late. Once in a while, like you have those nights where you just, I, I'm not, I can't fall asleep. And I go to bed at like 3 and I'm up at 5.30. Yeah. So now I wake up at 5.30, a couple alarms just to check mm-hmm. myself. And then I wake up, I make breakfast, I'm out the door by 6.30. Yeah, so... Yeah. You've got I, the best of both worlds, though, because yeah. I'm a night owl, Yeah, but I suffer for it in the morning, yeah. always. It wasn't that bad when I was younger, but now I'm definitely suffering for it. Yeah. But you're a night owl and an early riser. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't either. I pay for it sometimes, but hey, here we are. <laughs> well, I think the hard thing now, or the big thing now, um, is that not getting that sleep opens you up to heart conditions. So I would sure. make sure you get your eight hours. Guess I'm getting there. Which you're probably doing it now, anyways. Like you're not. Eh. No, I'm. I'm like a five to six. Type I, of I'm about a six. Yeah. I don't think I can't remember the last time I had eight. Yeah, it's a long time. If I at least eight straight, mm-hmm. and I don't think many people do. It's tough, but I guess you're supposed to. Huh. I don't know how sleep works. Sleep is weird. <laughs> the worst part about sleep is that you can never make up for it. Like not, not you, really. you, you can and you can't. What I found in my time, when I was working, when I was in Calgary and I was working, and I had to wake up at like five a.m. to walk to work and stuff. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'll nap, and I was nap. I napped for a month mm-hmm. to see if I can make up some sleep. Nope, didn't mm-hmm. do anything. Still felt like crap every single morning. So I was like, well, that's great. I can't add on to the sleep. Yeah. It just subtracts. So. That's the way it goes, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, shit. I should tell you this. So this kind of piggybacks off me having a bad day. Uh-huh. We're in traffic, and we overheard people yelling oh. next to us. And it was a couple. In a car. And the wife was yelling at the husband. Oh, yeah. About something. So we're, our eyes are forward. But, you but casually, our ears. No, no, no. Your windows are down. Soap's Ca- window was down. And, yeah. And, uh, and uh, her sister's was down, so we can we didn't hear words. Yeah, we just heard noise. Oh, okay. Our eyes are forward. Mm-hmm. We're doing our thing. It's not you know it did nothing was really like we weren't paying attention 
quote unquote. Mm-hmm. She gets out of the car in the middle of the road. Oh, wow. And starts walking to the sidewalk. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> we're, and, and we're like, are, is this happening? We hear the door open. She doesn't even say anything, slams the door, and we are, it's their vehicle, our vehicle, the side lane, and then the sidewalk. Yeah. And then the light just turned green. So her timing was impeccable. Yeah. And she just starts walking down the sidewalk. And we're just like, oh, this is, that happened. I've never seen this before, by Whoa. the way. I've never been a part of this yeah. before, by the way. And we're just, and I'm looking, and I, this is when I looked, and I looked at the guy. The guy was looking just straight forward. Power move on her move, yeah. on her part. And so we go, traffic's moving. We see him instantly cut to behind us. Yeah. And then go across, because there's a parking lot. There's like a superstore right across the way. Yeah, yeah. And so my guess is that she was walking towards there. And so he pulls in. So he did the right move. Not go home. <laughs> Not go, for go her. home, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, though, his power move would have been just to go home. It's true. Opportunity if, missed. If, <laughs> I don't know what they were arguing about. I have yeah. no idea. She gets out. That's her power move. His power move, which probably would have ruined everything, yeah. would have been to go home and let her walk. Yep. And of course, he would be to blame. And yeah. I'm saying, of course, because she's just going to blame him and anybody she tells the story, he's the bad guy. Now, he could very well be based on what they were talking about. Yeah. But she's the one that made the move first. Now, And, and so the way I would view do it is exactly the way he did. Because if she does that move, yeah, clearly there is something about the conversation that they had where he wasn't paying attention, yeah. And so she's like, "You're, you're gonna pay attention now, yeah." And he rightfully went. I don't know if they like he picked her up. We had we we're gone by that point, yeah. But I'm like, that's one power move and one power move, and that would not equal a good night for either of them. Yeah. That would have been a disastrous ending to something because mm-hmm. then it would have just kept going. Yeah, I I just I, I don't know. It's 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 a it was so crazy. That's hilarious. I was super surprised. We so were we were all just like that fucking happened. There's always a part of us that wants to witness these types of disasters in a way. We want to see it. That's why you always yeah. look at the person that's getting pulled over to see what their face looks like. Yeah. On the off chance that they're bawling their eyes out. Or you know them. Or you know them. Uh but most of the time now, like for anybody that I would even care, yeah, I know what their vehicle is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then when I look at the car, I'm like, I don't know that vehicle. I don't care. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter to me. But let's say like I know what your car is, I know what mom and dad's is, I know Sof's, I know mm. my brother in law's, like my mother in law's, like I know the the vehicles that I know. Yeah. Um and so if I saw that, that's when I'd be like, Oh damn. Mm-hmm. And then you know, try to figure it out. But yeah, that was crazy. Um, let's get into it. Yeah. easy uh i hope everybody enjoyed my life in hip-hop episode that i released last week with my buddy robert uh it was super it went super deep by the end of it like we went on hip-hop and next thing you know we're talking about like real life psychology type stuff Mm -hmm. um but i thought it went really good especially for robert's first time it was like i'm glad he had a good time that was the main point and we just kind of let it go so that had happened our joker review is still up yeah for those of you who are just seeing joker um it's making bonkers money and honestly, like more and more articles come out and people's theories and just it's it's more of a mind fuck. Than Anthony ever. sent me one today. Yeah, I saw that one, too. That's that's probably the most interesting one next to the IGN, I think, released uh, IGN or one of the anyways, one of those places. They released like uh, the four unanswered uh, questions with Joker that are very ambiguous and will remain so. Well, like, there's no real answer, only what you perceive. Yeah. I still don't want him to do a second one. Apparently, Phoenix yeah. and, and Phillips are both up for it. Which is I'm surprising. Like, Come on, guys. Don't. Yeah. Don't fall into the sequel territory. Don't yeah. ruin Because Todd Phillips did that with The Hangover. And he yeah. ruined it with number two and ruined it with number three. The Hangover should have yeah. existed as one movie. Yeah. The first one, done. Mm-hmm. And so... If I'm ranking Todd Phillips as a as a staying director, mm-hmm. he's a great one movie director. Yeah, uh, he hasn't really proven to have staying power with some of his, or he just ends up rehashing stuff, and, yeah. and just kind of like Hangover Two was exactly the same thing as the first one, except in Singapore or Thailand. Yeah, in Thailand, Singapore, and then the third one, nobody was even drunk, so it wasn't even called that. It shouldn't have been even called the Hangover. Yeah, like, but. Hmm. 
Yeah, so there, there's a lot of really good theories going around there. Some of them I buy, some of them I don't. Some of them I, I'm okay with, yeah. and some of them I'm just like, eh. But the, the good thing is is that yeah. I think the more people keep their mouth shut, the better from it is. The, from the, like, from yeah. Joaquin's side <clears throat> and Philip's side, yeah. outside of the DVD commentary. Yeah. Um, like, for instance, they were mentioning how that bathroom scene was actually going to be him scurrying in and mm-hmm. trying to hide the gun yeah, yeah and making yeah. it this panic thing as mm-hmm. opposed to this emergence scene. Yeah. I love that scene so much. Yeah. But what I sent to Anthony to that is like, you know, there's so much, everything, I kind of sent him the quote for the, from Assassin's Creed, the Credo. It's like everything, nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what this movie is all about. It's like nothing you saw was true, but every, op- every option is available kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. every option is correct. So mm-hmm. it's like, I thought of that right away kind of thing. So very interesting. Um, but and yeah, no sequel. You guys had <laughs> you guys had no response to what I sent earlier about. Uh, I can't remember the what three you different said. jokers. Well, I was thinking about that was, was an th- article, right? No, I never. Read. I just wrote it. I can't remember. So what yeah. I said was like the way that I look at the three jokers because everyone's uh, comparing. Yeah. They're comparing Phoenix and Ledger, but like if let's say yeah. if you take Ledger, Leto, and Phoenix, yeah, okay, and I'm like those three versions kind of embody the difference between understanding mm-hmm. and. Thinking you understand and going off the deep end, and yeah. you're to- you've totally missed the mark. So with Phoenix's Joker, yeah, let's say Phoenix's Joker is ground zero for the whole thing. Okay, that is the that is the true seed planted. Okay, for what is the Joker? Mm-hmm. Ledger's is the best portrayal of the, that. Is the best plant to come out of that yeah. seed. While Leto's was like. Oh, I know what this is about. I'm just gonna do a bunch yeah. of stupid stuff and like be an anarchist and all that stuff for no reason, just because I am and a gangster and everything, and completely go off the deep end and be yeah. like, "Yeah, you're wrong. Ledger's right." Yeah, this. that's the way I kind of got it. Yeah. I was like trying to, I was piecing it together in my mind that way. Yeah, his isn't good, which kind of goes into our one of our points where Leto was sad or upset that he wasn't considered. Like, dude. Your, Read the room. Your Joker version was part of a different series of things going on. This is completely different. Why would they bring you to do that when you've already done a version? It's a different time period. Yeah, like are you are you, are you a little child uh, like throwing a tantrum here now? Like, oh, why didn't they invite he me? Th- well, and also he probably felt alienated because a they cut a bunch of his stuff in Suicide Squad. Possibly, but it, I don't think it would have helped it. His portrayal in general is just. Nobody I think it was liked weak. It from day one. I think it was weak. It was just yeah. the look. Everything it, was it, off about like it. Like I said, it was a caricature of it. Yeah. Like Ledger's was a a beautiful portrait of. Yeah. This this Arthur Fleck Joker, for instance, mm-hmm. while Leto's was that weird character with like somebody's like, oh, I'm just gonna mess around and play around with this. I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be right on the yeah. surface, yeah. but I'm not gonna be right anywhere near the surface. Whereas yeah. Ledger's was surface and the entire iceberg. Yeah, like everything beneath the surface was there. Everything on the surface was there. Mm-hmm. Leto's, in my opinion, was strictly surfaced. Yeah, surface. Sorry. Like, yeah. and the second that first photo came out, nobody liked it. Yeah, but. To give a, a compliment to the whole thing it would be that Leto's fit in the world that he was in, the Suicide Squad mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. It was kind of that um, neon lights, exactly. music video, over yeah. the top, in but your it, face. So it fit of, for that. I guess, it has yeah. no place anywhere else. So yeah. to just give it a little bit of a bump, it wasn't great. Yeah. It it was what it was for what it was for, but mm-hmm. beyond that, it's so I, I don't even know how you, it's it compared to apples to oranges, like honestly. Well, but and then again to this, it's yeah. less comparison and more just the realization of like, no, this is what happens when you think you understand it, yeah. but you've only understood the surface level of what the Joker, yeah. quote unquote, is or that's, what. That's let's a good say point. the movement of Arthur's um, mm-hmm. actions. Yeah. What 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 movement spawned from Arthur's actions? Mm-hmm. And that one is the on the surface. You don't get it. You just see what's in front of your face. Whereas mm-hmm. Ledger's was like, he actually understood yeah. everything underneath. And then he created the surface level after all of that, yeah. right? Which was very minimal. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyways, it was, yeah, that was just the one thing I was I was just yeah. thinking of. And I was comparing it to a bunch of stuff. In like Do you think though before. Leto would have the acting chops to pull off that style of Joker though? I think so. He yeah. won an Oscar for Dallas Buyers Club. He's a good actor. I never saw that. Movie. Oh man, I heard it's good, but he's, I haven't seen it. He is because like he is a good actor. That's what I'm saying. He's I know he's a he's been known as a good actor, so he no. probably has the acting capability. 
to do that version of Joker, yeah. but the one he did was different and you it was for what, a different purpose. So you know what the thing is with uh, Jared Leto is he's a pretty boy. Yeah. And and by that I mean when I look at Jared Leto, mm-hmm. I don't know anything about him. Okay? Yeah. And this is just pure look. He went from his 30 Seconds to Mars band. Yeah. Then did some acting. Mm-hmm. Requiem for a Dream, he was outstanding in. Mm-hmm. And that's a hard movie. Yeah. Darren Aronofsky is not an easy director from what I understood. Like to get he, he pushes his actors in a good way to yeah. really dig deep, which yeah. is I mean, I I couldn't do it. And so he's got the acting chops, but a lot of it is just like, I don't know. There's something about there's something about Joaquin Phoenix, for instance, mm-hmm. that with and without the makeup, mm-hmm. there was just so much character in his face. There was abnormalities here and there. We talked about it in the review how even just how skinny he got. Yeah, I don't remember his nose being that big, but yeah. it made let's say his nose bigger. It made his cheeks bigger. He he just. Nothing was perfectly symmetrical. Yeah. Jared Leto is a beautiful man. Mm-hmm. Like he has got, like he, he's got, a, um, he's got that that look where it's just like, man, like you are a good looking dude, mm-hmm. and he does his roles very well. But he always looks good. It doesn't seem like there's anything real broken about him. On, yeah. Again, on the surface. Yeah. That's why a lot of his roles you see him aside from again Requiem, but still like mm. whatever. And and then Heath Ledger's version, he was always in the makeup. Yeah, and so you didn't really uh, notice except for the, one scene. Which scene? Was where he's like, where he played that cop. Oh right, he was, and that was scarred, so he didn't really look like it looked like Heath Ledger, but it didn't. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, whereas the Joker version in Suicide Squad, it's you saw Jared Leto. Yeah, like you didn't not see Jared Leto mm-hmm. in in Ledger's version. You could barely see Ledger. You saw Joker. Yeah. Right? Uh, so I, I think there's something about the character of somebody's face, yeah. That I, uh, that just it's all I can't find the words to say, it and I don't think there are words to really explain it. But there's a certain type of character that that Joaquin Phoenix has in his face, mm-hmm. and I I've heard him talk about his backstory, and it's like he's got a, he's had a pretty rough go at things, yeah. right? And so you can see that in his face. Mm-hmm. I don't see that in Jared Leto. Yeah. And that's why I think it just it wasn't going to work for this. I don't care no, if he I, feels uh, uh, alienated or whatever. Yeah, I get it from like, oh, I wish I could do that. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I don't think he can. Yeah. But I've, I mean, we've been wrong because no one thought that Ledger could be Joker to begin with, and look what happened. So, yep. I mean, that was just again just some running ideas I had. Yep. Um, I guess we'll stick on some uh, Batman stuff. Sure. Zoe Kravitz to play Catwoman. That's a good cast. I think that's a great cast because I think Catwoman, it's all attitude. Yeah. And she's got like, she can handle herself. Yeah. Like, she did good. Tell. She did good in the most recent Fantastic Beast. She was in the second one, mm. The Crimes of Grindelwald. She played, uh, what the hell, something, one of those strange girls. But yeah, she did very well. Even though it was a minimal role for the most part, I think she just has the style and she could pull it off very well. well. The fact that you even remember that yeah. with such a little part is a big deal. Yeah. Like, that's a true... She was in Mad Max. Mm-hmm. I remember that. She was really good. Yeah. Very minimal role for that, too. Um, I'm trying to see. I didn't see yeah. the Divergent. X-Men First Class. Yeah. I remember yeah. That. She was in the first uh, First Class. Um, yeah. She was in Spider-Verse. I don't remember what she was in Spider-Verse. Hmm. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. I just... I was, like, looking at, like, videos and interviews when she got cast. And she's just got... She's kind of got what... Um, Tessa Thompson has yeah like she, she's got that like it's presence that's what mm-hmm. it is she just has that presence and yeah. I think Catwoman above all things mm-hmm. like Michelle Pfeiffer dude she has presence she's yeah. on screen and it's like you are locked in yeah so I think I don't know I just think that's really good casting mm-hmm. and then the other casting that I'm really excited for is Paul Dano as the Riddler yeah I think that's so good yeah and he's kind of uh, an obscure actor and he doesn't have anything major well um let's let's look at this he was in prisoners okay Hugh I never saw Jackman, that. Jake, oh man you Hugh Jackman get, and who and Jake Gyllenhaal prisoners. dude watch that he was the priest and there will be blood Okay. That, and and that's the it. one where I think, just like when I wanted and I got, I felt mm-hmm. I got, that I wanted Jake Gyllenhaal's Nightcrawler performance yeah. to come into Mysterio. If Paul Dano brings his um, the the priest that it, role that he played in, there will be blood. Yeah. Oh man, that's a Riddler. 
Mm. That would be an uh, unbelievable riddle. Honestly, the only thing I remember him was in The Girl Next Door. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was also in Swiss Army Man, which is uh, one of those movies that I highly recommend. It was him and Daniel Radcliffe. That's right. He played, yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. He played a pretty shitty person in 12 Years a Slave, but so did every a lot of people in that movie. Yep. Um, he was in Looper. He was in Taking Lives. Yeah, yeah, Okja. What else? What else? What else? So good supporting think, roles, nothing too main for well, the most part. If this is going to be more focused on uh, Batman going after villains and there's going to be a plethora of villains, yeah, I, I think it's going to be what kind of Arkham Knight the game was promised to be where these villains are working together instead of them being separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this might be one of those situations which I think would be unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So to have an actor, again, just, just watch There Will Be Blood and focus mm-hmm. on Paul Dano. Yeah. Like... The movie, I feel that movie is overrated. Mm-hmm. Personally, it's still a really good movie, but yeah. it's not as good. Daniel Day Lewis' performance, unbelievable. Yeah. Paul Dano, unbelievable. Just the movie itself, it's just, it's a lot. I don't know. I, I, there was so much hype around it. Yeah. I, 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 I like it. Mm-hmm. Will I see? I've seen it three times. I don't think I see. Think I need to see it again. I yeah. might just to see Paul Dano like, mm-hmm. performance. But I would highly recommend people watch that just to see Paul Dano, just so you can be like, oh, damn, he's real good. Yeah. Like, he is very good. Mm-hmm. Um, Jonah Hill is not going to be Penguin. Yep, he's out. Or he's not in talks to be a villain at all. No, he just completely backed out yeah. of the whole project. Um, Apparently, it was a salary dispute, but hey, uh, here you go. Hey, man, the guy pretty much worked for free for Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Uh, I think right now he's going to be like, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah, I've taken my hits. Thank I've taken you. a big hit. Yeah. Um... What is it? Oh, and then Robert Pattinson had awesome comments, I thought, about Batman. Very apt. Mm -hmm. When he said, Batman is no hero. Mm -hmm. And these are his comments. Batman, not a hero, though. He's a complicated character. I don't think I could ever play a real hero. There's always got to be something a little bit wrong. Mm -hmm. His morality is a little bit off. He's not the golden boy, unlike almost every other comic book character. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about almost every other comic book character. I would say Superman is the only golden boy. Yeah. I like I can't think of another like there isn't an MCU character that I can think of cuz Captain America isn't even. He went against an entire government. Yeah. Like he of off his own principles. He went completely against the system, right? Yeah. And he went rogue. Yep. He pretty much told uh Thunderbolt Ross to like f himself and, you know, with the help of Don Cheadle's character in, in his own War, cap way. In his own cap way. Yeah. So I think Superman is really the only golden boy, which is why he's such a hard character to nail down. Yeah. Uh, it's actually funny because Soph and I watched Justice League last night. And okay. Soph's like, I've never seen it. I'm like, put it on, I guess. <laughs> and uh, she's like, she looks at me because she obviously, her and everybody knows my disdain for Captain Marvel. She's like, is Justice League better than Captain Marvel? I'm like, as a movie? No. Yeah. But Captain Marvel is way better as a movie. <laughs> I said, I hate Captain Marvel but for, what it represents for no I, I as as a own standalone movie forget the Brie Larson BS on the outside if this came out before Winter Soldier yes I would be on board with it yeah I would be just fine with it mm-hmm. but the fact that it comes out like the the 12 o'clock like right right yeah. at the what's that what's it called when the it's ninth like, hour the ninth the hour, 11th hour the 11th hour yes that's what it is the last hour the 11th hour of endgame yeah. and tries to rewrite the history of the mcu just to make her seem like she's the coolest person in the fucking world no no thanks also i didn't like anyways but i, I told yeah. her i'm like no justice league is is worse movie yeah. than captain marvel like i'm yeah. like so but i said if i'm like if you watch captain marvel you tell me i'm gonna get the fuck out for two hours <laughs> but here's the thing it's funny now with the, with the new I think IGN released it, or even Marvel has posted it. To watch it and binge it, you got to watch Captain America, then Captain Marvel. So really, then it helps your perception. <laughs> but in, in that, yeah. sure. If I've never seen it before, exactly. Then and that's the order. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you know what? I 100 percent agree. There you go. <laughs> it still makes the scene with Nick Fury when he says you got to keep both eyes open. Yeah. Really cheesy. True. In a very serious, like totally ruins it. Yeah. But yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, grant. Uh, like, I'll grant yeah. you. I'll grant that every day. That yeah. is a logical sequence of events to do it there for sure. All right. That's but uh, anyways, we were watching that, and I was just looking. I'm like, man, like Superman was actually pretty good in this, outside of his mustache yeah. situation. Huh. 
because he's the golden boy and he had yeah. such Superman moments. I'm like, and and I looked at it. I'm like, yeah, as a whole, this is not very good. But there were some decent parts to Redeeming it. Redeeming qualities. Yeah. But Soap's a- reaction after was like, well, things happened. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, you know what, sweetheart? Things did yeah. happen. <laughs> is that the one that they're demanding the Strider cut? Or is that I think BBS? that's both that and BBS. But I think BBS is the big one. That's that the big one, yeah. 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 Anyways. Um, where was I going? So that's Robert Pattinson stuff. I think those comments are valid. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that is Batman. That's even kind of what the, the Batman in that DCU, what they were trying to do, was portrayed as well. He was a flawed individual. He was no hero. Yeah. Um, and but they he, also did mer- that in Christopher Nolan's. True. Like even, even Lucius Fox was like, this he, is wrong. He, like he became was, that. He transitioned yeah. into that. He had that virtuoso section of him for that little bit, and then you saw him. Dark Knight is where that's where he became the Dark Knight because he yeah. had to be that. He had to go that extra route for sure. Um, but I mean, he has always had that balance yeah. where it's like, why? And and it's always been that battle. Yeah. Why do you think you're the one that can do it? Yeah. And he's always had the argument of, well, it's not me. It's the idea, the symbol, the symbol yeah. of the bat, and everything. But no, the fact that. Robert Pattinson knows that. Yeah. To me, it's like, oh, you get it. Yeah. You get the on, you get the beneath the surface stuff. Yeah. And then you can work on the on the surface stuff underneath the cowl. Yeah. That's it. Should be good. Um. Oh, I. Okay. So I guess this will lead into my other one. Robert Forrester dies. Died this week. That yeah. was pretty. Like, if you don't know who Robert Forrester is, um, if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, then he was the guy that saw the vacuum guy that got. Yeah. Uh, Heisenberg and Saul. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew I recognized. He played. He's played in a lot, a lot of roles, mind you. But he has been in so many yeah. movies, and he is kind of. He is like that Carl Urban character. Yes, he's always good. Yeah, he is never not good. Mm-hmm. But if you really want to see how good he is, watch Jackie Brown. Oh yeah, because I believe he got nominated for supporting uh, Oscar role for Jackie Brown. That movie is. I like it. Yeah. a lot. But his performance is really good sam yeah. jackson's is really good in it mm-hmm. too um but his role is exceptional yeah yeah i knew i, I recognized him and then i watched el camino recently and that's gonna be my next and thing. he was like right there i'm like oh wow yeah so yeah because he's tied into his story yes let's get into it sure el camino did you watch it i did me and Soph watched it just yeah. before we watched justice league i liked it yep overall it this it's 10 when years did you see it sorry when did I see it? Yeah. I think like last week. I don't know. Or earlier. Okay. Something like that. It's been six years since the finale. Uh, six years. So for a six-year turnaround to have this, it, it doesn't feel necessary, but it's kind of satisfying to the to the viewers to see Pinkman's story come to a close kind of thing. Yeah. Um, It was both suspenseful and yet kind of mellow at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like it was not bland per se. Now- had they done this when the release had happened, I think it would have been just as impactful. Mm-hmm. Honestly, um, well, it probably would have been more impactful. Yeah, exactly. You you saw what happened, and then they carried on with two or three more episodes to wrap his story up. Even just one long special. Yeah, but I think. You but could, that was two hour. This was a two hour movie. They I could, think it was. They I think could have shaved some time. A little it. bit. There's uh, just a little bit, but uh, like they could have done a one and a half hour one, like they did that with Sherlock. Like yeah, they could do an hour and a half episode, yeah. just like Spider Man mm-hmm. Far From Home is mm-hmm. kind of it. It bookends the Infinity War saga. Yeah. This could have been an epilogue. Yeah. Yeah. to the Heisenberg story. Like he's died, he dies, and now we have this special episode. Yeah, but uh, overall, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was cool to see his story come to a close and like fighting with his demons, kind of thing, and you know dealing with whatever happened and yeah yeah you his performance is amazing mm-hmm. like performance wise outstanding there was some really tough scenes to watch like the scene where they had him running back and forth yeah whole like that was brutal mm-hmm. um what he had to go through that opening part i would say the first half had so much to it mm-hmm. and then it just ended up lagging like yeah. it, sorry, dragging yeah. towards the end, and I think what it was is that so they had their suspenseful moments, but mm-hmm. there were so many moments in between that were just so quiet. Yeah, and I get that's deliberate so that quote unquote Jesse has time to think mm-hmm. and, and and reflect and whatever, and I get that. But the other thing that 
some movies do, and this mm-hmm. is kind of um, or some mo- a lot of movies do this, uh, or some shows kind of do this. A lot of the flashback scenes mm-hmm. didn't really like they only meant something in the context of this movie. Yeah, nothing to the overarching yeah. season series. Um, oh, and spoilers in five, four. Should I say spoilers? Anyways, yeah. there is a cameo in this. Let we we don't have to go too much in spoilers. Yeah, there is a cameo in this that was great, but I think because of the year difference and because. It was with the body of today. Yeah. Let's say Pinkman. Yeah. You could tell it wasn't a flashback. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you could, t- especially with like uh, Todd. Yeah. Because I was watching Fargo he's and big. he's awesome. And yeah. He's, but he's big. Like, yeah, he's yeah, a fat yeah. guy in Fargo. Yeah. But he was super skinny in Breaking Bad. It's true. Right. So the, when they did those flashbacks, you can tell they're flashbacks specifically for this, which I get, but they had no meaning because it didn't really like, it was only in the context of yeah. this movie. Yeah. And some of them were long, like that Todd one. Yeah. That one was a long one. In the one. apartment. Stuff yeah. Like, yeah. Um, then there, there was that one. I, okay. So the welding guy. Yeah. Where was he from? Because he's like, remember me? I think, again, that's another context within only this. Because when, unless the welding guy was also. Because he was in the flashback when he did the running scene. But was he ever in the TV series? Just more ideas that harken back to the whole series, like the yeah. last little bit. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like it was, it was within itself Yeah, and I can't remember, I, th- I was going to watch or, uh, I did watch where Vince Gilligan and, uh, J- uh Aaron, Paul. Aaron Paul both kind of answered like, why do it now? Kind of thing. Cause that's, I'm sure that's right. everyone's question. And, and yep. I can't remember what they said for the life of me, but I, I got, I can't imagine it's maybe it's enough fan things like, you know, it's kind of the right timing. Who knows? I think their issue was. I like what they were going for with him just getting away. Yeah. But I think he jumped around so much Mm -hmm. that it just felt like, um, it just felt like when he got away, it's like, okay, that's it. Yeah. He just got away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the ending was a little bit long Mm -hmm. and it was like, okay, like, yeah, I remember leaving for a band practice and I came back and there was like nine minutes left. And the only nine minutes was when he and ended up where he was supposed to end up. Yeah. And that was him. Like, Soph and I were looking at her like, that's it? I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. You felt a little empty even though I think you got what you got, but yeah. you were like, ah, that's it. Okay. Like you said, yeah. exactly. It felt a little empty. And it was funny because like a lo- some clips were left uh, – away from the, t- the trailer. If you remember, uh, Skinny Pete was in interrogation. Mm-hmm. That was never in the in the movie. Oh, yeah. And then, allegedly, with the letter that he wrote Brock, uh, that's Brock, right? He's a kid? The kid was Brock. Yeah. Apparently, with that, he they were supposed to actually show the full letter, but they didn't. They just showed who like it's going what's to. what's in the yeah, words? the or... words in the words and stuff like that. Because I'm sure he checks it just in case he says something stupid of where he is and come find me, whatever. Yeah, um, that opening with the boys, like with Skinny Pete and that, like yeah. especially when Skinny Pete's like, "Man, you're my hero," and like, yeah, he gets that plan together pretty quick, which yeah. actually is like, it was cool to see because you know that they're both kind of been quote unquote, like they've both been portrayed as like dumbasses, in yeah. A way. Um, but you know, he came up with that plan pretty quick, concise. And yeah, the boys were there to help him and stuff, and Badger had a fat stack with him. Just he just gave it all. I was yeah. like, holy shit! Like those are friends, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there was that, that the opening parts were really good though. Yeah. Like there was some, there was real, there were some really good parts in here. And I honestly think if you shave down a lot of it, mm-hmm. you'd get a better movie. Yeah. Like if, if they never had that welding thing, like the welding guys that pretended to be the cops. Yeah. I think if you just took out that scene altogether and he found the money and he left. But then, then that would mean that he just goes straight to the guy, gets and that's like, it, and then that's it, right? Yeah. Where this added some conflict towards it, mm-hmm. and that was a cool thing. But there was no meaning with the guy there. No. Aside from the fact that they created a flashback for now that he was the guy that created yeah. his mechanism for the meth lab, right? Yeah. But other than that, I had there was there was no meaning except to see Jesse like do his Mexican standoff, which was dope, like. Yeah. It was it was it was smart how he did it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was smart throughout this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and the thing with his parents and everything, like, you know, there was yeah. again, definitely some good He was he was there. definitely a, more clever than you would ever imagine with this with He's this one. gotten more like He's throughout gotten this, more, the but whole then series or this, the whole season, yeah. This showed a little bit more resourcefulness. It was it was funny though that he didn't remember the vacuum place though. <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah. And his interaction, but with, he didn't know because he because all he, he forgot. Got, nope. All he got was a phone call, and he was told to be in a spot. But no, he he, he was band. supposed to call. Wasn't he supposed to call? Saul it? called. Saul called for everything. That's, no, that's when he right. found that. That's when he found that uh, that they took the cigarette and they replaced it with the ricin. Yes. That he gave to that, but it wasn't the ricin. It was the yeah. lily of the valley. But um, that's when he was waiting for that van. That's when he realized what Saul did because mm-hmm. Huel grabbed it. Yeah. You know. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I yeah. I would say watch it if you're a fan. Yeah. Um. It's not bad it's a really good performance from aaron paul like some of those scenes were crazy good Mm -hmm. like crazy crazy good um and he had a nice end to his story and yeah it's you know it exists yeah um what else i have i've got a lot of stuff the martin scorsese thing about marvel things not being cinema that keeps going and going and going um jennifer aniston is but coming in on it now too jennifer aniston says she can only go what is it she can only do TV. TV because we need less Marvel movies. No, she quit TV because of the Marvel movies. Or quit movies because of the Marvel Yeah, that's why she's moving on to TV. Yeah. Well, the thing is, everybody's going to TV anyways. Yep. Some of the biggest stars are doing TV. Because they it's realize... Con- it's that- consistent work. Yeah. It's now paying money. Mm-hmm. It's not stigmatized. Yeah. It's not like your career is ending. A lot of people find... Back and forth. ...really yeah. good fitting. And yeah, they do back and forth. Um, I kind of get it yeah and i get it because some of these actors and actresses are not going to do marvel movies and they don't like you it's not part of their repertoire right now jennifer anderson has also done adam sandler movies and a lot of like the ones that she's done have all been shitty mind Mm. you most of adam sandler's have been pretty shitty in my opinion Mm -hmm. so it's like you're doing Adam Sandler movies and you're going to shit on Marvel movies. Like, yeah, come on. Like Adam Sandler needs to like step it up. Yeah. Except for that new one that he's going to do. What was that one we talked about where he's the diamond guy? Oh, geez. I can't remember. That one looks really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's this whole thing. Now, what's mm. funny is that in reality, the MCU is just going to like trail off and just start doing movies here and there. Mm-hmm. They they have a lot on coming yeah. up, but it's not going to be as important as this last little leg was. No, so really, they, the, the big part is happening, and I think what's going to happen now, I feel that they're going to push back a lot of these dates. They could, like I, I think that, and we could end up seeing a Disney situation where they're like, you know what, maybe we rolled out Phase Four too fast. Mm. Maybe mm. we should have let the Infinity Saga simmer for a bit. Yeah, and then, you know, transition easier. Mm-hmm. Um. But, you know, there's people going back at Martin Scorsese. Robert Downey Jr. had a really good interview with uh, Howard Stern. Yeah. Where he's like, does Martin Scorsese actually feel threatened by yeah. Marvel movies? Yeah. Right? And and Howard Stern seems to think so. But Robert Downey Jr. is like, it's Martin Scorsese. Like, the guy is a legend. And yeah. everyone's like, he is a legend, right? And if it's in a movie, if mm-hmm. it's in theaters, it's a movie. It's cinema. Like, that's yeah. literally the definition. Yeah. I will say, though, that... I am wrong in my initial analysis of Martin Scorsese's comments. And the reason is I talk about new age rap, for instance, Mm -hmm. as not being rap yeah, or not being music in some ways. Yeah. So I'm kind of like Martin Scorsese in a way where like not by talent, at all, but like in the way that when I listen to mumble rap, yeah. or and by I listen, I mean I hear it. I don't yeah. have it anywhere near me. When I hear it, I'm like, this isn't rap music. This mm-hmm. isn't hip hop. This isn't whatever. Like I just cannot stand it. Yeah, and I make hard stances. I'm like, no, this isn't music. Mm-hmm. And then someone's like, well, it makes a ton of money. Yeah, and it streams millions and billions across the world. It's and something. It's and it's notes put together on mm-hmm. a beat machine yeah. and someone r- rhymes words even if you can't understand what the words are over it. Yeah. So, A, it's music. Yeah. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was I was making those comments. So That's that, that's I, the purest in a lot of people where like the whole, the, you know, that's not music. That's, this is music. Like, yeah. go back to the classic rock or whatever. Like, you're comparing the rap to that. It's like, no, they have their own. It's their own genre. Yeah. And it's not a very appealing genre to us who grew up with a different version of it. Mm-hmm. So it's its own genre of rap. I don't um, listen to Elvis. Yeah, I, mean, I don't care for Elvis either. Like, and yet he a defined thing. a generation apparently. Yeah. So or he started, he's the king of pop. 
right? Or king yeah. of but whatever. I will say this. I like Louis Armstrong. That's I like different. Ray Charles. Yeah. I like listening to like a lot. I like Frank Sinatra a lot. Tony Bennett. I like the, I like listening to those. Yeah. But let's say some other ones. I just don't. It just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I like rock music, but I don't like Elvis, yeah. which is kind of weird. The initial thing. Oh, this isn't what it is, and that's where the purist and Scorsese is saying like, oh, unless it's a mob or you know psychological thriller, it's not a true movie. It's well, cinema. I, I think if thing. it doesn't for him, if it doesn't deal with um, real life situations in a way. Because yeah. he deals with a, like real life situations. True, well, he hasn't done a. Single it's it's movie the realism that's fantastical. Really. Yeah, it's a realism behind it, right? Yeah. So, but he um, feels that it's not the I, it's I, not the case. I'm like, yeah. I, I, because I like it. Yeah, it's different. If I liked mumble rap, for instance, mm-hmm. and somebody else was like, "Oh, that wasn't music," I'd probably defend, defend it because I'd be like, "Well, technically, by definition, it is." Yeah, everything lyrical or musical, sorry, is music by definition. Yeah. But for me, I'm like. Nope, it's garbage. Don't like it. Don't need it. Yeah, get it out of here. Yeah, like that's just me. Kevin Smith has some funny comments. He's like, how he said uh, Scorsese made like I don't know what Scorsese is saying because he made the biggest superhero movie ever with the, the with Jesus <laughs> Jesus the Christ Silas movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and you said that too. <laughs> yeah. So th- yeah, he's like, uh, did you send the whole quote? Uh yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Hold on. Is this Yeah. Was it was it uh, directly to the chat? Yeah, it was directly to the chat. It was just a, a screenshot. Before we get that analog pocket thing, does look dope. The one with all the games on it. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I guess we could talk about far. the fact that Kevin Feige is taking over Marvel. I mean, he's already been the head of Marvel, but now oh, he's like, I don't know when I sent that. The whole deal, which isn't really a surprise. Mm-hmm. Really isn't a surprise at all. But, anyways, yeah, yeah. So, what did you say? Was it the argument of um, who would win in a fight, Superman, Jesus, or what? Oh, uh, I can't remember. Like, Captain America or something, or like Iron Thor or something like that. I can't remember. I didn't say it. Someone else did. Oh. It was well, Kevin Smith. It was all yeah. part of his comments. Yeah, because, see, the funny thing about that, the, my response to it, um, is that it's an unfair battle because even if you get rid of Jesus, he comes back after three days, and it's yeah. like, oh, man, we got to do this again. And who knows what they've been doing for the last three days. It might have been through the Instagram. Was it? Maybe. So I think it's an unfair fight just because of the way that he responds. Yeah. Like, he doesn't respond right away. Like at least if like when I'm playing Red Dead oh, yeah. Online, it's on Instagram. So this is what this is what Kevin Smith actually said. For my money, I think Martin Scorsese made the biggest superhero movie ever, which was The Last Temptation of Christ. Mm, mm-hmm. Don't get much bigger of a superhero than Jesus. He beats Superman and Robert Downey Jr. every time. So maybe Martin is bending on the territory on that territory. Well, so. and again, it would be Superman takes out Iron Man because of course he does. It's Superman. He cannot beat Iron Man. Yeah. Maybe with the gauntlets, but then again, he only has he. Can't, I mean, again, he's toast. Yeah. But then it it might just be this ongoing thing where every three days there's this new battle. If Superman doesn't die, and it's like this isn't fair at all. Yeah. Like at one point, they're like, <laughs> so they fight. Jesus will beat him with love, maybe, <laughs> or just rain fish and wind down his head. Yep. I've stuffed these fish with kryptonite. Yeah. yeah! <laughs> if that's how but it yeah. sounds. That was funny. Yeah, a little too much hate out of nowhere. And that, and that's and Robert Downey just said about why say it? Why make it public? That's true. Just keep your comments to yourself. The fact that you're going out there is you know, you're just creating this, you know, anarchy in well, a way. Yeah, it <laughs> not is. anarchy, it but is. yeah, you're creating a negative comment and like I There's don't know, a negative commentary happening comment, yeah. around it, yeah. And because he's such a, a mogul, like he is, again, he's my top director. Yeah. I love him to death. And it's just like no, like it is cinema and there's so much nuance in it that, and he hasn't seen them all like we talked about the last yeah. time. But anyways, it, this thing keeps going and going. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll go from Rob, from there to Robert De Niro said that de-aging could make mar- make movies cartoony, which I get. Yeah. Because that one still of him in that army outfit, mm-hmm. like with them army helmet, he looked super, see, like it, the yeah. de-aging did not look as good. So yeah, there'll be moments where it doesn't look as good well done per se and I don't know if stu- certain studios have a better technology for doing the de-aging than others or if they all share it and like Ooh. like is it a program is it like is it just I'm people sure. doing a, that good a job with it like I mean Marvel did a very good job Captain like, again still to this day Captain Marvel Sam Jackson and yeah. uh, and uh, Phil Coulson mm-hmm. unbelievable yeah it, like and it was open daylight on them and mm-hmm. they looked unbelievable and that was the entire movie versus just yep. a few scenes here and there. Like yeah. Robert Downey Jr.'s in Civil War at the start. Remember when they had that little 
the oh. little memory yep. thing. Yep. So he was de agents as well. And yeah, you could tell it was different, like different body and that kind of stuff. But you know what? At the end of the day, people look past that kind of stuff unless it's Justice if it's League. Good. Because <laughs> you know, you know that, that was bad. See, th- that's sorry. That's de aging versus the CGI that they yeah. covered up, which was horrible. But-, but, but it's also an allocation of funds. Yeah. If they never had. So. When they had that big battle of Themyscira, mm-hmm. and Steppenwolf comes in, grabs the mother box, and then he's yeah. in the middle of the field. He has it in his hand. Then, like the riders of Rohan, the 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 Amazonians yeah. come over the thing on their horses. Like, first of all, you're too late. Yeah. And second of all, why did you waste so much money on CGIing these Amazons? Amazon warriors coming over this hill just so he can peace out like that doesn't do anything he already has it yeah you saw he came out of nowhere into your super protective room yeah and so us as an audience are like well this guy seems to be able to come in go wherever he wants yeah you could have saved that money make superman's face look better and make stephen wolf stephen wolf not look like a cartoon yeah like i think a lot of the thing with the de-aging is that it's going to be it's expensive right and they're going to have to be smart about how they allocate their funds yeah and it doesn't work for everything, obviously. No. So with Scorsese, he just he needed these actors to be in a certain age. Like, okay, I'm not sure. Just flashbacks. Okay. So the one that's that why. the one that does look super cartoony. Yeah. This is why I agree with Robert De Niro. Right. The one scene in the trailer where he is yeah. in that army outfit. Yeah. He looks like a cartoon. Yeah. Like, and and it's noticeable. But do you think it's cheaper than getting in some younger actor to play those flashbacks? Um, probably not yeah, yeah. I think because that's a one off uh, like job whereas you need the actor the whole time and who are you going to replace Robert Downey Jr. with Robert De Niro sorry Robert De Niro with yeah so that that's probably why the only thing the, that the, would... the introduction of this thing they're not going to find younger versions of Pacino Pesci or anything they like can't that. exactly because so. the time period is too short right right it's like the, it's like how how does how does Ted Mosby sound like Bob Saget? Mm. He never does, and it's it's a loop, it's a plot hole in the How I Met Your Mother thing where it's yeah. like, his voice doesn't even sound like that at the end. It yeah. still sounds normal. Uh, in this case, when he's in the army and when they're showing him in it is maybe 10 or 15 years, mm-hmm. you'd have to find somebody really close. Yeah. Like, the the best comparison I can think of is when they cast Josh Brolin as a young uh, Tommy Lee Jones for Men in Black 3. Yeah. That was great casting, yeah. and that worked out really good. And you can see how one could turn into the other after yeah. a certain period. So, of see, time. I don't. The aging wasn't a thing back then. I think they might have done. Well, For they didn't need to do the de aging there. But they, they just used CG. But they didn't have it. They didn't. Have, sorry, they didn't have the right technology to pull off the de aging during when Men in Black Three came out. Maybe they did. That must have been like what, almost not ten years ago, but. It's been a while. Listen, for it to be at the place where it's at now, yeah. they've had the technology. They just haven't sure. been able to perfect it. Sure. And I think this is this movie is going to be a true testament on on mm-hmm. how... Because I think it's going to be good. Yeah. But I'm, this is more of a conversation of if they keep doing it, yeah. then the bad stuff is going to look really bad. Just like mm-hmm. too much CG, CG looks really bad. Yeah. Like a lot of Justice League looks terrible. Yeah. Like and mostly because of the CG. Like it just mm-hmm. doesn't look clean. Yeah. Obviously, we know that they've had issues behind the scenes yeah, and stuff. But beyond that, yeah. yeah. So I could I, see his I, comments. I, it has some validity to it. but Big time. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with it. Um, Scarlett Johansson pushing for an all-female MCU film. Yeah. Not surprised. Yeah. I'm in for it. Yeah. It'll work. Yeah. My, own, my thing is, <clears throat> this is where we're going to get in some hot water. Is there an all-male MCU movie? Ooh. Nothing yet. I understand that <laughs> she was the only female in the original Avengers. Yeah, for um, a long time. For well, up until Ultron again. Up until, yeah. Um, but I mean, like, do it, and I think it'd be awesome because the MCU has a ton of really, really good female characters. Yeah. Um, but again, th- that begs the question. Mm-hmm. Like, They'll just say, oh, you don't need to because there's already too many male actors. I'm like, yeah, but that one doesn't equal the other. Yeah. We're not going out of our way to make yeah at least i don't think they're going out of their way to make male specific let's say uh mcu films and i can't think that they did because captain america you have peggy carter robert Downey jr you've got uh or sorry in iron man you've got pepper Potts, and then the second one you have pepper and black Mm -hmm. widow yeah so there's always been you know women involved in it yeah females in there so to give them their give them their own a squad like this like they want yeah Cool. A force, I think. A force, yeah. A force, yeah. Something like that. Super cool. Yeah. The problem is though is that my concern when when you have this many people, just yeah. like any other movie, 
a lot of them are going to lose focus. Mm-hmm. Like, who are you going to focus on? Yeah. Which female are you going to put over the other one to lead this squad, so to speak? Right. And what believable storyline exists where only the women go to battle? Right. As opposed to it being like they start off with, oh, we don't need the men this time. Right. Yeah. Um, or like that's 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 the one I was trying to think of it for a while now. It's mm-hmm. like, what would be the reason mm-hmm. specifically because you've got people coming from out of the galaxy? And so that part would be really tough. Mm-hmm. Like, and for Wasp to go do her own thing and just tell like Ant-Man to stay back. Yeah. Like it'd be really, it'd be really interesting to see. I say interesting yeah. and difficult. Yeah. Right. Um, Cause it, with I, that many female characters, yeah. if it was just a few of them, yeah. super easy. You can do that all the time. Mm-hmm. Like you can do that all day. Yeah. Right. But even in this, say the oceans reboot where that was all female. Mm hmm. There was only specific uh, female characters that they focused on, and the rest were ancillary characters. Yeah. What do you do with an MCU that has female characters that are prominent in their roles? Yeah. As- <coughs> Excuse me. Especially when, and so Captain Marvel is the only one that has her own solo film. Yeah. And then Black Widow's going to have her solo film. Mm-hmm. Now, she's probably not going to be in the one going forward. I think right. she's just like, no, I would love to see She's it. advocating, yeah. So then. Is it going to be Captain Marvel as the top of this thing and all the other characters? Like, what about, let's say, Gamora, who's been around longer? Yeah. What about Wasp, who's been around longer? Right? Yeah. It's going to be very difficult to... to Shuri, Okoye. Shuri, Okoye would be big ones, right? Yeah. So how do you separate... How do you make sure that everybody gets their just due, yeah. for to, instance? To me, it's just... I don't know what the story would be. Is this an yeah. alt-universe thing? Well, I, again, it there has how to does be. It, it just how how does it fit with the MCU? We know because they're gonna do the same. They're gonna make sure that it all fits. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. Now, I I think there is comics that support this whole A Force thing. Obviously, which is what they're gonna do. True. Yeah, but it has to be in an alternate universe, or it has to line up with what now. Not all the comics line up with the movies. Obviously, and the movies don't line up with the comics, so they True. can play around with it. Yeah. My only concern going into this is, yeah. again, I was watching, and this is another Oceans reference, I guess, me yeah. and Soph were watching Oceans after we got back from Vegas. Yeah. Which, by the way, if you go to Vegas, don't bother going to the Marvel Experience thing. The thing's stuck in 2015. They have, like, Ragnarok and a Black Panther mask as their newest items on there. Yeah. Like, aside from some cool stuff, like, I got to take a picture with, like, the Iron Man suits and on Cap's motorcycle and stuff. It's, like, stuck in Ultron. Yeah. Anyways, so a little bypass. We watched Ocean's Eleven, right? Yeah. And even then, we're like, well, they focused on Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Yeah. And a little bit of Matt Damon and Don Cheadle. Yeah. And then everybody else just kind of came in for little bits. Yeah. But that's because when the movie came out, we didn't really know the rest of them. Yeah. We know these female characters. Like, we've we've got to experience their awesomeness. Mm-hmm. So how do you put that together? Yeah. That would be a very difficult thing, mm-hmm. I think. Even and especially with if they decided to do, let's say, an all male, mm-hmm. um, an all male MCU movie, you can't do it. First yeah, of all, even for the men, it doesn't make sense story wise. Not even close. Not even close. Cap maybe, but yeah. then Thor is doing Love and Thunder, so he's going to have Jane Foster mm-hmm. and he's going to have Valkyrie. So yeah. there's there's like he's kind of had his own movies, so yeah. maybe that's why it would make sense. But to add all the other characters, Ant Man would need Wasp. You, Black Panther, sure, but mm-hmm. Shuri is a big part of Black Panther. And Okoye. And Okoye. You know, again. And uh, <clears throat> the other chick, which she was completely absent in Endgame. Um, Lupita Nyong'o's character. Oh, Nala. No. No, 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 no. Nala. I'm thinking... I'm thinking uh, <laughs> Lion King. <laughs> Lion King. Um, it starts with an N, yeah. I think. Uh, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, she was completely accent, uh, absent. Absent. Yeah. She was... Completely absent from it. I guess the only is... Lupita Nyong'o was Nikia. Nikia, there you go. Nikia. Yeah, I was surprised actually that she was completely absent. Yeah. That would have been sweet if she but wasn't because she was for awesome. me, story-wise, with the current MCU that has been established, yeah. doesn't work. What about Wanda with Wanda and Vision and they're doing their WandaVision thing? Yeah. Like, I can see her going mm-hmm. and doing her own thing for sure Yeah, because like she doesn't need Vision. Yeah. So, that's easy, mm-hmm. but and she's also been around since Age of Ultron, so you should really have her as being one of the focus. Like, it would be cool if like there was a version of like 
her that goes evil or something and like they have to all come back but like it wouldn't make sense let's say for star lord mm -hmm. to come in and do an all male movie with cap and some other people because you have nebula you have mantis you have gamora all prominent characters so he wouldn't go yeah. in without the guardians mm -hmm. let alone rocket groot and drax like leave them yeah. out of that for instance so it doesn't make sense now because it's gotten so big mm -hmm. you know what i mean i don't think it ever would have no, I think it would have earlier. I for sure think it could have earlier. I don't know. Like I think if I think if Black Widow had her own deal, yeah, and, and like let's say it was, she got together a bunch of girls that she I found. Can see, <laughs> I can see a Black Widow, a Koye, and a Kia spy thriller, where the the th like those three go out and like Do really stuff, rip yeah. some stuff, like a good trio film, almost like the Captain America. Robert Downey Jr. and Thor, or Iron Man and Thor version yeah. of the females. Because you've got Shuri, who's brilliant as hell. Yeah. You have, um, uh, it would be it would be a cool little power battle between Okoye and uh, Black Widow. I, hmm. I think, I think it would almost have to be Okoye as the cap role. Yeah. Because she's led the Dora Milaje. Like, she yeah. leads, she is, she is more of a warrior than than oh. Scarlett Johansson, and Scarlett yeah. Johansson is very much like a Robert Downey Jr. or a, like an Iron Man type. Yeah, kind of rogue on her own, but yeah. has to be able to play well with others. Yeah, that's a movie I would watch for that's sure. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, but a full ensemble, mm, no, it, it would just be tough to to sell, especially because they've gone this far. Yep, it's Phase Five, they could probably do it. Uh, honestly, a what if? What if? Of course, what if? Oh my God, what if Thanos wiped out all the men? Yeah. Dude, all the females going up against Thanos and his army. That very believable. That'd be wild. Yeah. And that's and that's the only thing that really is, is flawed with this idea is the believability behind a full live action movie. Yep. But in the what if series, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. It's a great call. Yeah. Um there's also a female focused John Wick called the Ballerinas in works, which I which think is, is interesting. Unbelievable. So is it is there any like information or is it just uh, is it in the world of Wick? Well, it's remember that that uh, theater he went to in John Wick Three. Oh yeah, that's that's the screenshot that they had, uh, dude. That would be so awesome. That's pretty interesting. That w I want more of that. Like I hmm. know I want a lot of the Continental. We're gonna get it. Yeah. But then the second he walked into here, I'm like, what's this place? I'm yeah. like, and all of those ballerinas were dancing in sequence. Yep. That would be an unbelievable... And they're all tatted up as hell. So oh. clearly there's something extra there. And the fact that like ballerinas pretty much torture themselves. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think you can ever see have a scene with a ballerina where her feet yeah. aren't completely torn up. Like They go yeah. through hell. Crossover. Natasha Romanoff first came from the ballerinas. That's the actual Red Room. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be dope. Was that what Red Sparrow was kind of about too? I don't remember. With uh, seen, Jennifer sorry, Lawrence? I haven't seen Red Sparrow. I haven't seen it. I don't know. I haven't seen it either. So I'm just kind of thinking. we should watch it before. We yeah, can. maybe. You know what I did watch uh, a while back? Atomic mm. Blonde. Pretty oh, good. How was that? That was uh, Charlize Theron, right? Yeah, it was pretty good. I heard she did amazing with that. Yeah. But yeah, Ballerina. She's amazing. That's interesting. The spinoffs they can actually do with this is actually very good. Oh, yeah. 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 That ba Like the second they said it, I'm like, yep, yep. Yes, please. That's awesome. Yeah, it was so good. Hmm. Especially when you realize how intricate that organization is. Yeah. Just like the Continental. Yep. Um, 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 what time is it? Oh, we're closing up. iTunes is dead officially. PS5 coming out 2020 Hollywood season. Um, the Apparently Doctor Xbox, so it was like Xbox uh, Codename Scarlet, Scarlet is supposed to be coming out then as well. They should call it Codename Scarlet Witch and it should be red. Mm -hmm. Well, the Xbox name it hasn't been released. What they're going to call it? They're just, okay. So that, that's why they're just calling it Project Scarlet right now. Um, the Doctor Doolittle trailer was okay. Like it looks. Uh, I, I I'm interested. I when I first saw mainly the casting behind it, really I think I, that got me more excited. Than anything. Yep. Um, I think Robert Downey Jr. kind of falls into the same roles when he goes to that because I think Sherlock. Yep. As soon as it does era. However, I think his accent's a bit different. It so, is. and I don't know how his character's actually going to play out in this one. If he, um, he's going to play that arrogance. Maybe he's got well, that more whimsicalness to him. It seems like it's going to be very much more yeah. whimsical. I guess, like, the thing is, too, is like, it's going to be a, for kids. For sure. Like, parents are going to go with yeah. their kids and they're probably going to do that thing. Yeah. But, like, for guys like us, 
It's I'll still go see it just because it's Robert Downey Jr. But I could see where it's more geared towards kids for yeah. sure. Same with like they just released like what a Sailor Moon movie is coming on its way, a, a live action awesome. Barney. Yeah. Awesome Sailor yeah. Moon. <laughs> is this spider coming down? Or is that just a? Oh, that was really crazy. I was like, I'm like, is that a translucent spider? Oh no! Um, Let it bite you. See what happens. You can be like the Jack Black Spider Man from the 2000 MTV. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Awards. laughs> um. What else I have? Will Smith says he shouldn't have turned down the Matrix, but uh, I wrote a note here. But thank fuck he did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, it didn't, it didn't work for his career because he ended up doing Wild Wild West, which was terrible. Hey, well, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but at least Keanu got yeah. into Matrix, and Matrix turned out to be the movie that it was. Yeah, I think it worked out. And they're with Matrix Four, like they're gearing up solid. They're they're trying to get out there. I'm stoked. Jada Pinkett Smith is in it, right? I have no idea why Neil Patrick Harris is going to be in it. Yeah, and maybe that's because I'm always stuck on him being Barney. an eccentric. Yeah, not even Barney, just an eccentric. Like he's just he's a showman. Yeah. And so it's it's one of those things where I, it's like, oh, it's Neil Patrick Harris doing Neil Patrick Harris, except for White Castle. That one was really good. Uh, yeah. That one was odd. His role in that was unbelievable. Yeah. But uh, it could be interesting. Yeah. Um. Oh, last thing I got. This is the last thing? Yeah, this is the last thing I got. That Oscar the Grouch faded trailer. Oscar the Grouch? Did you see the SNL trailer that they used the Joker for... Oh, they with made the Oscar the Grouch. Uh, uh, with uh, David Origins. Harbour, eh? Did you no, watch it? No, I didn't watch oh it. Oh, my God, dude. What is your problem? I don't know. I it's didn't the, see it. It is. I think I passed by it so many times, but I never actually saw it. It is the best thing. Okay. Yeah. It is the best thing. You know what? You're going to watch it. You're going to leave for a sec. You're going to watch this. I can't watch it. Oscar phone, the Grouch. No, I'm going to I'm gonna set it up. I don't care. It's two minutes and 55 seconds, so I have to riff... For two minutes and 55 seconds. Here you go. He's going to go off for a bit and watch this Oscar the Grouch thing. And we're going to talk about it when he gets back. So now you're just stuck with me for about three minutes. Um, Upcoming things. Upcoming things. I guess I could fill you in on. Uh, I got a deep dive coming up with some dudes. I did a... If you go to the story of you, that's you with the letter U, not Y-O-U. Um, with uh, Shane Broom. And uh, it was about me, and I'm really terrible at talking about myself. So it was a okay episode. His it, like he was awesome. I'm just not very good at stuff like that. But you can check that out. But he's coming on, and we're going to be talking about a dude named Frank D'Angelo. And so the best way I can explain this is that Frank D'Angelo to Canada is like what Tommy Wiseau is to America. So he's like the Canadian Tommy Wiseau, except we know that he's Italian. And we, I think we generally know where his money comes from. But the thing is, he's been in bands. He's been in, like, I think movies that he funds himself. He has photos with celebrities. Like, he's all over the place. And he's just this weird enigma that's just always there. He's not a very good singer or, like, musician at all. Um, I mean, compared to me, he's really good. But, um, you know, that's very low bar. But anyways, so Sean and a buddy of his, they're going to be doing a Skype call on Sean's rig. So he's got he's got a really cool setup. He's got much better mics than I got. So uh, we're going to be doing that pretty quick. And I'm stoked for that. Um, And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think the other thing I wanted to mention early on is uh, for all of us Canadians, it's voting time. It's voting time on Monday. So if you're listening to this on a Saturday or Sunday, then you know that tomorrow or the day after is voting day. If you're listening to this after the 21st, that means that you've done your due diligence and you voted. It's a big deal. And uh, it's a big deal for reasons, uh, for more, it's it's a responsibility move on everybody's part. I think um, I used to be one of those people that used to scoff at it when I was younger and ignorant and stupid. Now I'm older less ignorant and less stupid than I was back then, but have the wherewithal to know that it is um, it is very important to vote. Uh, that's a right that we have that many people don't have and many people didn't have, and there's reasons why we have them. And I think the big thing that uh, 
that I, I, I don't really post to Facebook, but I did post something talking about how whoever you vote for, it doesn't matter as long as you vote and as long as you remember that each individual person, like we still need each other the day after the election. Once everything's been established and, and we know who's, who's the next prime minister or who's leading or who's running or whatever, everybody still needs each other. We still have to live with each other. So I guess my only thing that I said back then on my post, which nobody from here probably saw because you don't follow me on Facebook because I only tell you to follow the F word, is just don't burn bridges on the way to the ballots. Yeah, chill the F out. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and maybe after this election, depending on what happens, we can stop using Facebook and our social media to shove our beliefs down people's throats. Start your own podcast and let people like go and listen to you if you want to do that. Like it's super easy to do, especially like with Anchor. That's what we use. If you're ever curious, Anchor mm-hmm. is the one that we use, and we're on eleven platforms. And I really didn't have to do shit except for make these episodes and upload it. But uh, anyways, that's Monday. How good was it? That was hilarious. So good. Hey? Such a dark Sesame Street. Oh <laughs> man, it was so good. And when I saw that, I'm like, sorry, going back to the Oscar the Grouch SNL trailer yeah. they put up. That's the best thing SNL has done for a very long time. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say since Dick in the Box came out. Yeah. Like, it was on. Oh, I did like the Breaking Bad parody, but that was on Jimmy Fallon, so it mm-hmm. doesn't count. But yeah, it was so good. <laughs> David Harbour was so good in it. Oh, yeah. Sesame Street, like, the way that they shot it and everything, I was like, holy shit, they did such a good job with this. Yeah. And I want to see that fucking movie. I don't care if it's like a shot for shot with with that, but replacing all the characters with Sesame yeah. Street characters. It was so good. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, just look up Oscar the Grouch trailer at SNL. They finally did something good for a long time because yeah. SNL really needs to stop like doing the same shit over and over yeah. again. Like their their political stuff. Mm-hmm. It was funny a few years ago. Yeah, it's kind of overplayed now. Yep. Um, but anyways, yeah, that was kind of like the last thing I have. Do you have anything else? Was there anything I missed? Uh, kind of to go off of, I have a couple of things. David Harbour, I watched the new Hellboy, his version. Oh yeah. Horrible. I heard it's horrible. It was very horrible. I'm happy with the Ron Perlman ones and I, I enjoy so both good. of them very much so. And it just sucks that it didn't hit the mark, but mm-hmm. what are you going to do? I watched it just out of curiosity and, uh, I just rewatch. I just watched Peaky Blinders season five. If you haven't ah, watched, Blinders. if you have not watched that, you honestly, it's probably one of the best new shows out there today. Honestly, mm-hmm. and it just sucks. Season I like. I binge watched the season five that just released on Netflix, and we probably won't get another. Apparently, the next season doesn't supposed to come out till twenty twenty one. So they're Game of Thrones in it. Yeah, but yeah. this has been. A great series the whole way through, in my opinion. I I love it. It's great. It is good. I don't know why I haven't been as invested as other people. Mm-hmm. Um, like I haven't been as into it. Yeah. I still How far enjoy did you get? it. I'm on season four. Oh, so you're watching it, but you're yeah, just oh, yeah. not like I, have I gotta to see watch. It. Yeah. 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 No, I've rewatched it now a couple of times. Oh, crazy. So yeah. It's up there. <laughs> um Randomly just saw this. Mm-hmm. I, uh, Taika Waititi is still directing Akira, the live action anime movie after Thor 4. Cool. And I'm really excited to see Jojo the Rabbit. Fuck yeah, that'll man, be that interesting. looks so good. Uh, this weekend, Zombieland 2, Double Tap. Oh, yeah. I'm super, I'm super excited to go see it. I want to because I, I think I mentioned it last time. I did like um, I did like the, the first, first one. one. Yeah. yeah. You know, just and for fun. I saw fun. it recently too. Just for fun. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything crazy story-wise. It just has to be fun. You know what's super funny? Hmm. Is that this is probably the first time I actually heard you say that a movie is horrible. Yeah. Well, I've said it a couple. Well, the movies we reviewed... I usually like most of them, but I I have a few that are on my list that just suck. Yeah, no, this one like you were like the fact that you said horrible. I was like, oh, it must be really bad. Then. <laughs> See, that's my level. <laughs> oh shit. Whereas you say almost everything sucks. So, <laughs> no, you know what? I'm I'm turning the corner on that. I think yeah. a lot of it. I think a lot of it was also, you know, you know when you try to be cool. Are you trying to be analytical? Is that what you're trying to do? No, just listen. Okay. You know, sometimes in life when you try to be cool Mm -hmm. and you know that you don't have to try so hard to be cool. Yeah. You can just let things happen. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when I was reviewing some films and and don't get me wrong, I never like I never said anything about a film that I just didn't like Mm -hmm. that I didn't like just for the sake of saying I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
like I said, I even say I, I have positive things to say of even Captain Marvel, right? Yeah. Even Justice League, even Batman v Superman yeah, yeah, that yeah. I shit on. But I legitimately do not like those movies, right? But I can find good things in it. Mm-hmm. But I think especially early on, what I've what I've developed and what I end up doing is that I have to like I always maintain a super critical version of my movie going south mm-hmm. that sometimes it's not necessary. True. Like I don't have to be cool at Thanksgiving dinner. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm like I'm not I'm not a cool person by nature, but I'm saying I don't have to try to be cool at Thanksgiving dinner. I'm in a cool I'm in a safe space, right? I'm yeah. with my family, everything's cool, right? But I also don't need to pretend to be cool outside either. I can just be me, right? Yeah. So now I'm I'm trying to I'm working on this thing where without compromising my own, I guess critiquing integrity that I carry for myself. I yeah. don't know what everybody else thinks about mm-hmm. my reviews. But I just I try to look at the details and see where what's wrong and what's right. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if I like a movie, I just like it. Yeah. And there and like there could be a bunch of stuff wrong with it. And if I like it, then you can't fucking take me off of it. Yeah. And if I really hate it on principle, mm-hmm. that's the one thing. If I hate something on principle that I gotta gotta work on. But anyways, you, when you say that something's bad, like sh- historically it's bad. Yeah. But most of the stuff that you say is really good, mm-hmm. and I spend a lot of time just really critically thinking about things, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. I don't know. I'm more. I don't open. even know if anything that yeah. I said in the last forty five seconds to a minute meant anything. But mm-hmm. it did, did that make sense? You basically, said you're fake. I'm just trying. To... <laughs> well, that's what I was trying to avoid to say. No, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't. I've never been fake in my reviews. No, I get. I that. think I've just been overly critical. Yeah, and I mean, like you just, I, I find enjoyment in more more things for sure. Um, it takes a lot for me to not like a movie. Again, yeah. Hellboy, I wanted to like it. I I actually liked the trailers. It was it was like the Medi- Those trailers are great. Is the Medellin effect? The trailer looked amazing, but the movie bombed hardcore. Bombed hardcore. And that and that's happened a couple of times. Like there's been a lot of like the Miami Vice movie with uh, way back with Colin Farrell, Jimmy Fox. Terrible. Big piece of crap. Terrible. The Max Payne. Terrible. With Mark Wahlberg. Shit. Um. What the hell else? The Hobbit. Awful. Ah, uh, no, no, man. <laughs> you haven't watched it. You can't say anything. I could. The fact that I couldn't get past the. That's first on you. You have to, to force yourself minutes. to watch it and make then a critical analysis of it, okay. if you wish. All right. But to not watch this, you know, more than like the first ten minutes. It was so bad, though. No, it wasn't. It that opened bad. up terribly. You opened up terribly. <laughs> okay. I like them all. Kai, okay. Just okay. But you got to say that even the uh, the first 10 minutes of Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring is infinitely better than the ever opening minutes of The Hobbit. It's not that much different. Oh, it's, it's a big difference. Whatever, man. They're okay, they're telling the story of what happened at Erebor and stuff. Like, how how is that different than Galadriel telling what happened? Like the intensity and how it's being told is definitely infinitely better, but In the, the essence is the same. See, there, I felt it went too cartoony and commercial. For sure, it did. Yeah, that's the, what I don't. So, want. Lord of the Rings was very dark, and I agree with you. No, it wasn't dark. It was. It was. It was serious. The world's coming to an end, dude. Okay. The Hobbit. No one knows the world is coming to an end, so everything's happy and chipper. Therefore, it fits the theme, does it not? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. That's right. So shut your mouth. I'm just saying. Watch, watch it. it. I'll watch it. Watch it, and then next time you come on the show, if you have watched all three, give me next time I. I come on the show. You mean all the time? <laughs> next time you come on the show, and you have already watched them all. Not meaning the next time oh, man, exactly, but of... the the time you come here after you've watched them all, then you can we can have a conversation behind it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anything else? Uh. No. Okay. The second I said that Sailor Moon movie, I really want to see that fucking Sailor. Moon. I, I would watch I do. that. I do. Too. That show was so dope. It was. Um. Oh. I forgot to mention the bombshell trailer. Looks real good. Yeah, you said that was the that. one. You I haven't no seen idea. that one, right? No. Um, I yeah, I would I recommend. The, right <laughs> well, the fact that you have no idea what it's a, like, what it is. The other yeah. one was a parody trailer. Oh, okay. So, for those of you who don't know, the bombshell uh, movie it stars um, Charlize Theron, Nicole Kidman, and Margot Robbie. Female employees at Fox News take on a toxic male culture leading to the downfall of media mogul Roger Ailes. This is a real thing that happened. Mm-hmm. So you guys can look this up. The trailer uh was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like I'm super into this trailer. Yeah. And Charlize Theron is looks 
like Megan Kelly. Nicole Kidman looks like her counterpart. Who's her counterpart? Fuck. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Doesn't say shit. Um. Anyways, the they look awesome. They all look really, really, really good. Uh, John Lithgow is supposed to be Roger Ailes, the CEO of Fox News. Mm-hmm. So that's a big deal. Um, th- yeah, this is like, like I said, it's a, it's an actual story. It's a legit story. It happened, and it looks really, really good. Um, again, just from Gretchen Carlson is Nicole Kidman, and Kayla Pops Pistol, P O S P I S I L is Margot Robbie's character. Um, yeah, the the trailer looked really good. Mm-hmm. I don't know how the movie's gonna be, obviously. Yeah, and this thing actually happened. Um, I don't know to what degree. With yeah. all of these movies that are based on real events, it doesn't matter what it is. There's always something there. Like for fans of Straight Outta Compton, Dr. Dre was not that composed in real life. He and Easy E wasn't really the bad guy they made him out to be. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot of skeletons buried in that Straight Outta Compton movie closet. So, just you know. I would highly recommend everybody read up on this story, though, because I'm pretty sure this is going to like it's going to be very close because, again, we have real up to date information on this stuff. So, <coughs> excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, yeah, that trailer looked very good. And these actresses are top notch. So I'm really looking forward to that movie. That's it. Yep. That's it for another week. Um, you can find me on Twitter at the F G. You can email us at the F podcast at gmail.com for anyone still interested in sending us an email review of something you've watched or listened to or experienced. You, that's the F podcast at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram at the F words. Th- no, that's Twitter. Instagram at the F podcast, Facebook at the F podcast, the podcast, uh, lazy Canadian on Instagram as well uh, for Anthony's meme page. Um, I think that's it. Mm hmm. Thank you for listening to the best best podcast you'll never hear. The F Word Podcast. I'm G. I'm Vass. And we are out.